Hmm. I've made a clean spot. Washing the independents is a lot of work, especially if I'm doing the roof. It's a really big workout, which is why I usually only do it once a month or so. Going to head into Hot Springs and have a bob. The highlight of Hot Springs, Arkansas is this strip of road that divides the city of Hot Springs from Hot Springs National Park. On the left side here you have your various shops, boutiques, and restaurants, and on the right side is the National Park itself, also referred to as Bath House Row. A cycle of hot spring water that surges up into the mountain is captured and directed into each one of these beautiful bathhouses through a series of thermal water piping each house with its own unique architecture and services. This national park is the nation's oldest, predating Yellowstone by 40 years. It features more than 30 miles of hiking trails through the glorious Uachita Mountains, picnic areas, and campsites. A trip here would not be complete without a dip into healing water. In the city of Hot Springs, the government mandated that all the hot spring water be available for the public. This fountain here, 143 degrees, it's hot. You don't want to drink this one, but they also have cooler fountains. Public fountains that you can drink the mineral water from. Pretty cool. Feel the heat coming out of there. Everything trickles down, permeates into the earth, trickles way down deep, about 6,500 feet. Gets heated by the earth's natural thermal layers, and the pressure comes back. 700,000 gallons a day. There is one particular bathhouse that offers something that none of the others do. This is Superior Bathhouse, and it's a brewery. That's right, a brewery in a national park. Only one of its kind. The bathhouse has a modest appearance compared to its elaborate neighbors, but Superior Bathhouse had the longest continuous operation of all Hot Springs bathhouses before closing in 1983. Enter Rose Schweikart. After the building lay vacant for 30 years, she reimagined the Superior Bathhouse into a brewery, craft beer tasting room, full service restaurant, and now event venue. They are the first brewery in a U.S. national park and the world's first to utilize the thermal spring water as their main ingredient. They turn 144 degree water into a myriad of styles ranging from light to dark, mild to strong. Hot springs on tap. It's the perfect little place to stop in and have a light lunch after our bathhouse experience. Food was fresh and tasty, and it was nice to try out this cold hot springs brew. I chose a flight of their lighter variety. Belgian weeds, blonde ale are some of my favorites. The way the flight works is simple. Each brew has a flight number, and after you've read the descriptions and made your choices, they are lined up left to right according to a printout, so you can keep up with which is which. I chose Madden's number one, two in the tank, the bee's knees, and Hitchcock Spring Colch. The verdict, our favorite was the bee's knees. Super tasty. Let's take a stroll, shall we? That's right, you must live your days as if they were your last. Because one day, they will be. You know what I mean. So go on, have fun, and surrender more cash for more wisdom from the great <laughs> Surrender Zoltar. more cash for more wisdom. Ohio Club, established in 1905, oldest bar in Arkansas. Man, I love old places like this, oozing with juicy history. 
If these walls could talk, right? You would definitely be entertained. For over 100 years, Ohio Club has been the place to be. It all started in 1905 as a bar and casino. And because of all the gambling that went on in Hot Springs, many headliner talents were brought in as well. In 1915, Al Jolson performed at the Ohio Club. Mid-30s saw Mae West. And an entire host of black, uh, blues and jazz performers played through the 60s. The Ohio Club has been a stop-off place for many a celebrity. Al Capone, Bugsy Siegel, Bugs Moran, Lucky Luciano, just to name a few of the gangsters. And it was also visited by many major league ball players since they had spring training in Hot Springs in the early 1900s. Live entertainment? It's still the mainstay at the Ohio Club, with music seven nights a week. So, gonna dig for some crystals. We're the only ones out here. <laughs> um, they basically bring a truck in from the mine and dump all this out here and dig through it. If it's shiny, pick it up. You can see them. Those tiny ones are on top here. The best place to dig is down. I'm just, my uh, technique here is just go straight down into the old stuff. I'm really digging this. Determination. There's something uniquely satisfying about digging in the dirt. It's mesmerizing, like staring into a campfire, yet compelling as looking for a four-leaf clover in a field. Your mind really wanders while your hands busy themselves away on autopilot. No, I did not dig all this up. I got a nice haul though. I'll be making some jewelry in the future. Alright, so we're back on the road, leaving Hot Springs, had a good time, uh, heading back to uh, Little Rock, gonna hang out there for a couple days, get some stuff done, and continue our way eastward. Stopped to get gas, and I pulled into the gas station, and they had a really weird angle on their, uh, from the roadway into their driveway. And the refrigerator wasn't all the way locked, and I dumped everything into the hallway back there. But I need some new blueberries. <laughs> Mignon with Borzen. This is a uh, Tallulah Creole disease. Gypsy Creole. Tallulah Creole. Really, really good. This bridge is actually a walkway. You can enter a pedestrian gate over on this side and walk or ride your bike across the other side and over to the marketplace. Good morning, everybody. We have left Little Rock after our little stay there. Enjoyed it very much. 
and we are continuing our eastward journey. Weather's not so great. Overcast the whole way. At least it's not raining. But it's still a beautiful day because I'm doing this. I'm Bobby Jean. This is my therapy.